Good morning, everyone. This is Catherine Clement in Boulder, Colorado, and this is our Saturday morning mastermind. And uh, unfortunately, our host, Samantha, has a migraine this morning, so we send her lots of love and hope that she feels better soon. And um, this morning, we, if you, uh, if this is your first time with us, we're actually a group of people that get together. We've been doing this for, gosh, over three years now. And uh, we choose one book at a time. And we sort of read that book and then we get together on Saturday mornings and discuss it. And the book that we're reading currently is Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Dwight, uh, Wayne Dwyer. And he wrote many, many wonderful books. We had a difficult time uh, choosing a book that we wanted to cover, like making up our minds. But we, we all voted and we chose this one. And this is actually where he... Uh, there's a an ancient text called the Tao Te Ching, and he looked at the Tao Te Ching, and he looked at many, many different interpretations of the Tao Te Ching, and then he wrote this book and gave sort of his interpretation. And so, this week we're on verse 52, and let me switch over there, and I'll read that. Unless somebody else wants to read it. Chris or Karen, would you like to read it? They're not jumping out there. Okay, I'm going to do it. Chris's hand flailed upwards. Oh, it did? Okay. Yes. Come on, Chris. I didn't see it. No, I was saying go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're a bit discombobulated this morning. All right. 52nd verse. All under heaven have a common beginning. This beginning is the mother of the world. Having known the mother, we may proceed to know her children. Having known the children, we should go back and hold on to the mother. Keep her mouth shut, guard the senses, and life is, never, is ever full. Open your mouth. Always be busy, and life is beyond hope. I'm going to reread that again because that's a cool little part. Keep your mouth shut. Guard the senses and life is ever full. Open your mouth, always be busy, and life is beyond hope. Seeing the small is called clarity. Keeping flexible is called strength. Using the shining radiance, you return again to the light and save yourself misfortune. This is called the practice of eternal light. And that is it. So there's a lot of, um, I'll be honest, this is the first time I'm reading this part <laughs> because that's why I had to read that part twice. Open your mouth, always be busy, and life is beyond hope. My life is very, very busy right now. And um, I didn't have time to read Dr. Uh, Dr. Wayne's interpretation in his book, but um, I'm sure that... He had a lot to talk about because there's a lot. Just reading through it that one time there, there's a lot here in this verse. What do you guys think about this verse? What's your first thoughts on it? Please excuse me a moment. I'll be back as quick as I can. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Catherine. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thank you. All right. Thanks for making it. Um, wow, that's interesting. It, it seems like pretty direct, like, I don't know, does it mean um, <laughs> go to a cave, don't say anything, stay still, and you'll be fine, <laughs> like, I'm not sure, it's like kind of direct, you know, like, uh, I mean, is that, what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not sure how extreme he means it, you know, is it, so. I uh, will say that it's it's much, much easier to be peaceful and um untouchable you know when you're like in your own little place in your own <laughs> bed in your own little cave you know and you don't have the internet or people to deal with like i can be totally zen i don't know if you've seen the movie um oh what was that now i can't think of the name of it there was a really um, funny movie about a, it was about a guy who was writing a book, sort of like conversations with God. 
and um so he's it starts out and he's like in he's in his position you know and he's got his fingers you know and he's, <laughs> he's oming you know and all of a sudden the phone ring i mean the doorbell rings 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 and he just you know, he ignores it you know and then it just keeps ringing and he's like Fuck. <laughs> 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 and uh you know his zen is totally blown out of the water but um yeah, people can like throw a little curb on your zen. Is that the one with Morgan Freeman or no? And Jim Carrey? No, that's a different uh, one. Not Lady Bruce. Yeah, I'll I'll figure out what it is and shoot you the link because it's a really funny movie because it, it it just it it so proves the point at the very beginning how you can think you're all zen out until like life happens, <laughs> something happens, and then you find out you're not as balanced as you thought you were. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see Jason popping on Facebook here. He's about to say, he's, I don't know. Let's see what he says. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Yeah. Like he'll probably so maybe he'll hop on. So let's talk about this. Um, so the, the, point the that i read over again keep your mouth shut guard the senses so like we were saying if you're in this dark little cave and you can't hear the tin construction sites going on outside and you know all the sirens and all that stuff it's it's way easier to be zenful <laughs> peaceful <clears throat> when you get involved in life um it, it changes and but i love how it says like seeing the small is clarity keeping flexible is called strength i think being flexible and it is definitely one of my strongest suits um i had to learn that skill being a nurse for so long and <clears throat> excuse me also my uh when I went to live with my mom, because I didn't live with her for the first nine years, but when I went to live with her after that, um, for the short time I lived with her, we moved all the time because she married a man in the Marine Corps. And so I got to uh, go to a lot of diff new places and be in new schools and new people. And it really, I think that's a great skill to have. Some people would find that upsetting, but I think it's really important to be able to well for instance like this morning my phone rang first thing this morning and the leader that was supposed to run the presentation on the early early call which i never do the early early call because i don't go to bed until like 4 a.m um but they're like they're not here can you come do the presentation and i mean i just had to wake up and no coffee no nothing turn on the thing and start talking <laughs> so you know being flexible came in really handy this morning because there was a whole people from india waiting for a presentation right so oh, well, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just have to roll with it uh, and like this morning um samantha couldn't be with us so we're just rolling with it and now jason's rolling in hi jason glad you could make it dear i hope you got to read the the bird <laughs> <clears throat> all of us were kind of behind times and hadn't even read it but it's a good one <laughs> hey morning. guys good morning, good morning. <laughs> didn't realize my uh mic wasn't muted That's how nice. you doing this morning good we're uh, doing good great terrific just got out of the shower so excuse me <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> yeah so did you guys have a good week mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Catherine was just telling us that she was up all night. I had the the the, uh, the, f the fun experience of having dental surgery yesterday morning. Ooh. And my day just got like worse as it went along. It was really tough. I'm okay uh, now. I'm okay now. Glad you okay. got it fixed, whatever it is. I dentists are definitely not my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> I have a great one here, a um, long-time family friend of ours that uh, he's great. He really does a good job. 
But um, yeah, so I don't mind it too much, but yeah, it's kind of scary. And once you're in there, you're like, oh, what did I get myself into? But he's uh, he's real good. He doesn't uh, he doesn't it really doesn't hurt. It's just more uncomfortable, you know. It's crazy, but uh, yeah, I hope uh, hope you're feeling better, Chris. Yeah, get your oh, I, I had a I had the last molar completely broken off, and they had to pull it out, and it hurt. Oh damn! <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it not... hurt. Okay, I'm not yeah. I'm not gonna be too. Uh, inviting to our new uh viewees so i better stop talking about my pain that was, <laughs> yeah. that was the first don't talk <laughs> we get real here we get real it's yeah a, real. you know this is life welcome aboard so <laughs> karen how are you today she's muted i guess can't hear her. i'm good <laughs> i'm not <laughs> I'm not going to describe what I'm dealing with. <laughs> I guess I'm, I guess I'm not uh, current enough with the current stuff. When I say what it is, nobody knows what it is. So, <clears throat> yeah, all right. All right. What'd you say, Catherine? I said Jason might know. I don't know. Oh no, Jason's no. way young. <laughs> Besides, yeah. he's in Florida. He doesn't have to worry about it too much in Florida, I don't think. Uh. <laughs> you just have to worry about it when you're out in the wild and you're way up on a mountaintop and you're sleeping good and all at once you realize, <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so what is, uh, what's the verse today? Have we gotten into that at all? Or? Yeah, it was verse 52. And um, it, it's, I was just going to pull out this little piece. Use the shining radiance. You return again to the light and save yourself misfortune. I know I sure do that. <laughs> I have to return to the light a lot. <laughs> I get unzenned. I have to go back to my little zen zone. <laughs> yeah, to me, that's how I use meditation. Yes. Yeah, and now, I mean, I have a friend that does biofeedback. He's got, a, like, a biofeedback machine, and so he offered me a, a, a session on it, you know, so that he could help me learn, or he thought he could help me learn how to, like, get into the different brainwave states and stuff. And uh, But I've been doing it for so long now that I can just, like, change my brainwaves in pretty much an instant, like he had, he hooked me all up. He was looking forward to this like one hour session with me. It was so hilarious. And uh, he's like, okay, we're going to start now. And I just like immediately went to my Zen zone and he's like, holy shit. How did you do that? <laughs> I'm like, it's called practice. So meditation doesn't come easy, but it is a habit that you can develop. I think, um, I think anybody can develop it. You might have to, some people can't just do like the sitting quiet kind of meditation to do walking or they have, that's why there's like labyrinths and stuff. And, um, you know, you, you can do it your way. I think, how do you do it, Chris? Are you one of the quiet meditators or do you like to be in motion when you're meditating? You know what? Um, I totally agree with the, the idea that it comes from practice because it was like when I first started when I was 17 I did I learned the TM technique and I did that twice a day for six years but then I also did massive amounts of meditation in my 20s my early 20s and you know then there was a while during my 30s where I wasn't doing meditation at all so then when I finally like came back to it like I realized it was the long-term practice that helped me like get back to that state really easily. So I think it's like running or something. If you were a long distance runner, even though if you hadn't done it in a while, you would pick it up pretty quick again. I think it's something like that. And so I like, I'm able to go to a really very deep state of silence. Like you were saying pretty almost always just, 
through practice. But so I have that advantage, but I think it's from experience. I agree. I think anybody can learn it and it's a habit like anything else. Um, because some people say, well, I can't do it because every time I do it, I have these thoughts. <laughs> That happens. <laughs> Thoughts happen. You know, you just have to learn how to just kind of watch them float by and not engage with them is uh, the biggest thing. But you can't necessarily stop all thoughts. I mean, you can, you get to places where you're, you know, thought free, but um, it takes practice. In my experience, there's techniques. If you don't have the techniques, that would be, that, that's where it's difficult. So and then you have to know how to do those techniques. I guess I don't quite understand uh, with meditation. Is it a more, is it, isn't it an extreme focus or a, uh, or a relaxation of the mind? Both, both. It's a light focus. It's a light focus on something simple, either a mantra or your breath or watching your thoughts, but then it's also a relaxing. It, it is, when you're focused on the breath, you are focusing, but, it, but in that you're unfocusing on everything else, which allows for that deep relaxation to come in because you're taking everything else. But it's not like you're hyper-focused either on the breath. Like you said, Chris, light focus. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some water on because I didn't even get my coffee this morning. And like, I can't believe my mouth is still working. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I got some tea over here, Stephen. There you go. What do you think, Karen? Have you had some experience with meditation? <clears throat> well, what you what you and Catherine are describing sounds more to me like um, a meditative state where you um, um or something. Uh, I I've done quite a bit of guided meditation, and I and for myself every day I um, greet a mastermind of invisible counselors, which I talked about. I don't know, months ago. And in the course of doing that, um, I'm, I'm involved in a, you know, in, in something kind of beyond myself. I, I guess I don't know exactly. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody else would have a different description for that. But I really have gained from being able to do that over now probably three or four years and um, it, it, it's always different you know in fact sometimes I will write I will write that uh, it takes me a long time because I'm not a very fast typist but uh, so I don't don't do it all the time but I'm always astounded at what um, what is there when I read it so does that uh, totally... That's neat. That's kind of like channeling or talking to channels. Well, I, I don't feel Spirit like I... Spirit guides. I don't feel like I actually talk to anyone. Uh, I can't recall ever hearing even, you know, silent words. It's, it's a thread through the mind. But I definitely know that I'm one of those people who feels or senses when um, I, I call I call family and friends that who've uh, crossed the border, you know, who've. <laughs> uh huh. So you said there's beings, right? A council. Well, the the council, the mastermind of invisible counselors, is what. Uh, Napoleon Hill talks about, and I know that you've you've gone over that and think and grow rich, um, but but a part of that is something I call my guidance team, which is everyone that I know of, and in many cases, 
I don't really know them. Um, so is it kind of in a thought form or a feeling and thought form? It's a, it's a feeling. Rather than rather than sitting around and seeing all these people at a, at a, at a table per se. Well, I'll give you an example. When my son, when my oldest son was, oh, I don't know, 17, 18, um, my husband and I had just gotten a divorce and, and uh, his stepmother had <clears throat> roused in him feelings of strangulation. So <laughs> he came to be with me <laughs> and uh, I realized he was gone. At uh, three o'clock in the morning, I must have gotten up to go to the bathroom, and and, and he wasn't there. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, where do I start to look? And he'd had some drug problems, and I was very concerned. Uh, I was just really concerned. I mean, I was just sick with the worry, and and I was doing what many mothers do at that time of night when they discover their child isn't there. You know, I was kind of racing forward and back trying to find my purse and my clothes and keep my head on and get my keys and go out to see if I could find him, which is ridiculous. I mean, you know, you know how it is, Chris, where there's lots and lots of people. You don't just go out and <laughs> pluck someone out of the air. So um, it happened that where I lived, I had to go past the refrigerator to the garage door. I mean, the garage door was right next to the refrigerator. And as I got beside the refrigerator, everything changed. I just became calm. And I knew who was there. It was my father-in-law. And the weird thing about that is I'm one of these, you've heard me rant, uh, I'm one of these lovely people who, you know, when I get real steamed, I... <laughs> say unkind things and I'd done that a lot with him because I wasn't very happy with the son he'd raised and I uh, you know I blamed him and blah 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 so here he was calming me down and there was no question there never has been that it was the spirit he's he, he's he wasn't alive correct oh he, he that's right he, he was the refrigerator <laughs> he was hanging hanging there as a magnetic whatever and um and, I, and I've thought about it since trying to discuss it with someone and, and realize what it was. It, it was a felt sense. It was absolutely as real a sense as seeing, hearing, touching, no question. And I send him in a posse with my son when he does things now because my son, although he's much older, <laughs> I worry about him pretty much the same. So, yeah, and there's a real knowing to that. There's a word for it. I can't remember what the, what they call it, but I mean, I've I experienced that, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, it, it's not like you can see them. Like a, I mean, I have seen spirits, but in the times like that, when you're so emotionally distraught and they come in to help um, they don't necessarily appear visually to me but their complete presence is known inside my body like as if they were standing next to me like I could you could almost smell say my grandmother's perfume or something you know, it's so strong so I've, I've well uh, that. that's the only other sense the smell sense is the only other sense besides that felt sense that I've experienced with that because I had a quilt my grandmother had left me and 20 years later, it was at the end of my bed and I knelt down to pray and for some reason, <laughs> for some reason I smelled that quilt and I took a tour of her house in my mind because of the sense of smell that I had that made, made that whole experience so real. Yeah. And sometimes uh, they can, I, I don't understand. I think it's difficult for them to materialize here for to the point where we can see them you know that's why not many people do but um, sometimes they can send 
sense or something through like sometimes you will smell them or or just feel the difference in the temperature of the room maybe and not even know who it is but um, for people that you're really close connected to like with my grandmother I can smell her perfume sometimes even though I don't have any of her perfume in the house or nothing that has it on it you know sometimes it'll just be there and I'll know that she's there and I don't know why that must be easier for them to manifest or something. Um, it's, very, it's really weird. But um, this is why when I did my short stint in, in the psych, you know, I worked in psych uh, for a little bit. But they were medicating people for connecting with spirits, you know. And here is something I've done like my whole life. So I was like, okay, either I need to take my badge off and just sit down and join the crowd or <laughs> you know, give me my pill <laughs> or something, you know. But um, Well, I, I'm really convinced that humans are at different levels. And as the reason I remarked that some of them I don't even know, I'm pretty convinced that there are, ooh, uh, excuse me, I had to take in a deep breath. Um, there are some individuals who are pretty lonely because none of their family or friends really believe in spirits. And so they can, you know, knock on their skulls and, and nothing happens. And so maybe they're blipping by, I don't know, you know, they can move so fast I have to believe that there can be a time that they can notice that I'm connected and they and they just kind of they just want to be they, they just want to have a sense that a human being still would know who they are and I can say oh Oh, you know, I, this is one thing I hope Robert Robert Redford does. Of course, I don't think he's going to be very lonely at all. I think, <laughs> anyway. Uh, but I, I, you know, it's just nice to be able to say something to someone. You know, you're always welcome, and maybe they never come back. But uh, I just know I have a nice little crowd on the other side. That's cool. It's very cool, and and it's uh, it's good when they you know you can ask questions <laughs> and they answer, um, or sometimes you just don't ask anybody specifically, but you just ask the question and you get answers from whoever answers. But um, I think we all have. I don't, a whole crew like you do, Karen. Just everybody's not aware that they do. How about you, Jason? What are your experiences there? Hmm. I don't really have any any experiences with um, like uh, spirits or anything like that. But um, I can relate to the uh, invisible council um, method of of uh you know picking a, a group of of mentors and and kind of understanding you know what they are about you know either by reading about them or listening to their uh their videos or webinars and uh, and then and then in your mind um you know while you're sleeping or dreaming or however meditating <clears throat> kind of uh you know, sitting amongst them and mulling over your, <clears throat> mulling over my issues with them, you know, mulling over my daily, you know, the things that went on in the day. Why did this, why did this happen? Or what did that, you know, and I've never, I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, but as I was learning um, what was in the Think and Grow Rich book, uh, I thought, you know, that would be, that would be interesting in trying out. And I kind of related it to just other dreams that I had had where you, where, you know, you encounter people from either your past or, or what have you. And I have the same experience kind of that, that Karen does where I know when I, there's no speaking or talking, it's just more of um, situational awareness, I guess. And, 
and sort of a, a mental understanding, you know, but then sometimes it's like, you know, uh, it's like there's the dreamscapes in the movies where you're like, what, what do you want? What do you, I'm supposed to follow you or am I supposed to, you know, you have no idea what's going on. And most of the time it's just like that. And maybe it's because I don't practice um, focusing on that. Um, but I, I understand what you're, what you know, you're getting at, but the, the whole, the whole spirit idea kind of, kind of freaks me out a little bit because then I don't know, you know, well, how are you to tell what thoughts then aren't your own and what are the spirits and, and are who, what spirits are these? And, you know, that's just the, you know, there's, there's too much going on in the world of this, you know, reality plane that, you know, um, I would just only, I don't know, just only confuse things further if I was um, looking into, even, even from looking at towards my intuition for, you know, for guidance, um, you know, sometimes getting a, getting an uneasy feeling in my stomach and not, you know, been like, Oh, I better not go outside today. Cause I gotta, you know, I feel like something might happen or, you know, well, I might've just, you know, ate something that's not agreeing with me or something, or maybe I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I don't think I'm in tune with, with, uh, things enough to be able to discern everything, uh, correctly. And, I don't know. It's just be kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of a, kind of a weird, kind of a, it would be kind of creepy for me to do that. You know, I wouldn't know who I'm connecting to and who I'm not because, I mean, I have had situations in my past where I've had like deja vu that, that, that uh, where it kind of works in, in reverse for me uh, where I will have a, a weird dream that's like of a place I've never been uh, or a, a people I've never been around. And, um, and again, it's kind of vague, but there's certain things that stick out that are like, Hey, I've never seen this place before. I've never been somewhere like that. And then maybe three or four months later, I'm in a place that's like that. And something about it triggers that, that memory of that dream. And then I'm like, Oh wow, this is, you know, and then I start looking for the connections and they're there. Um, but I've never really been, I've, I've actually been able to see what's going to happen kind of, but, but, but then I was still more of a, a passenger in it and I wasn't taking, I didn't, I, there, I, you know, I usually don't, wouldn't see the outcome. So I wouldn't know what I'm preparing for what to watch out for. I just know that like, in a dream state, I must have been, uh, you know, experienced something similar to it. But it's really odd, really weird. That's my kind of take on it. I don't really put too much, I don't put too much weight to it. Uh, it's just interesting, you know, and I, I think like, I don't know, more, you know, at one point I was kind of trying to, get into a dream state faster uh, by going through my daily routine in my mind for what I did that day. Uh, I had heard that when you go to, when you go to sleep at night, your, your mind tries to pull everything that happened during the day together before it goes into like a relaxation and a dream state. So, I figured that, and maybe I, someone had mentioned it to me somehow, but somehow I got the idea that, well, if I start, when, when I lay down to bed, if I, if, I, if I think about what happened that morning, like how I woke up, if I was woke up by the alarm or something else woke me up, uh, if I then went and brushed my teeth or if I then went and got some water, but everything that happened that day, I just think through that day and it sort of, sort of frees up my mind and it seemed like I could go into a, um, a dream state uh, that I could actually participate in faster, you know, like what do they call that when everything is very real to you in your dream state? Um, lucid. 
Lucid, exactly. Lucid dreaming, right. So it, was, it would help me get like almost like immediately into lucid dreaming because all this other stuff, all these problems and confrontations or, or even good things that happened during the day were already put in their, in their place in my mind. I'd already been like, okay, this all goes there, and now I could, I could focus on opening, I guess, my dream state up to uh, more uh, deeper thought, I guess. I, that sounds, <laughs> that makes any sense. <laughs> Have you ever heard of that? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> this is another thing, just like meditation. I think it's it comes with practice. And I think it has something to do with, just like we were talking about, with being able to throw yourself into different um, vibrations, different brain waves. I think that some people are able to vibrate at different levels. And when they're vibrating at the same level as whatever entity or whatever you want to call them is at that's when you're able to either see them or hear them or feel them or smell them or whatever i think it all has to do with just um altering your energy basically i don't know chris did you do you do lucid dreaming mm, do i do lucid dreaming not too much. I've had a couple experiences where I've been aware. Uh, I had one where I woke up in the dream and I was with the, the, uh, the Holy Mother Amritananda. And it was really wild. That was a long time ago. And I, I, all I remember is <laughs> she gave me a Hershey's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I am dreaming in a dream. This is what I said. I am dreaming in a dream. And I said, in my waking state, I'm dreaming in a dream. And right now I'm dreaming and I'm aware that I'm dreaming. So I had that, that, that one experience. But in general, no. But I've also had like really far out dreams. Not, not all the time, but sometimes really far out. I've had dreams on other planets, people telling me the, the distance of planets. Uh, what, who is it? Peter O'Toole was like in this long gown and we were sitting on a crescent moon and he was telling me about the, the, the space between planets and which planets were where. And so <laughs> I've That's had some- awesome. So do you think you were dreaming or do you think that you were, it was just an out-of-body experience? Because there's definitely... I was actually dreaming in that. I've, I've also had a few, few, few out-of-body experiences, but I can't say I was totally uh, <laughs> in my regular mind. <laughs> my, my consciousness may have been altered at those times. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. I always find it interesting that when I am in a... Um, in a dreaming state and it usually happens you know like right before I go right before I wake up it's the deepest times and things can be so real and uh, and I'll react to things and um, but if I if I realize that I'm not in a that it's a dream if I realize it's a dream then it gives me an opportunity to to just kind of go with whatever it is, and um, and then it becomes pretty it becomes pretty interesting because you can sort of con you can sort of uh, control it, and I guess that's what the lucid dreaming is, where you you realize you're in a dream and you can you can control yourself and you react um, to things as if it's as if it is a dream, you know. Oh, there's Animals attacking, you just fly away. You know, hey, it's a dream. Let me just fly away, and or let me just push them away, or immediately make friends with them. You know, or and um, and so it's it's cool to kind of control that dream, but then also sometimes um, 
you just I just realize I'm in a, in a dream and but I don't have I for some reason I just choose to kind of go along with it and see where it's going and see what um, where it's taking me you know and um, and those are very interesting too you can kind of go like if I if I all of a sudden I'm dreaming that I'm at this uh, huge party and um, and it's like all these people I don't know and then I'm like I can being like scared and and waking up and start mingling and 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 see where it takes it's funny because like the people it it's almost as if you watch this can't really a lot of times I can't really make out the faces. Um so I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just fun, you know, fun for me. Um, kind of, um, you know, I, I do enjoy my sleep. I can tell you how much I do. I have no problem with waking up and going right back into a dream. And if it's a good dream, I can I'll go right back into it and then even enjoy it more. You know, if I'm like if all of a sudden I'm in a dream that I'm skiing down a mountain and I'm enjoying it, and I wake up and go, oh, okay, well, got time. Uh, go back to sleep and I can go right back into it a lot of times. So, so that's nice. That's awesome. Sometimes it does switch, so, you know, but it's kind of just like going with it. And, but I, I've, I guess over the time I've started to look for those, those deja vu moments uh, as to, you know, is this something that's, you know, out of the ordinary? Is this a, something I've, I've never been someplace I've never been or, or something like that. It's kind of over the years of, of just being interested in that and doing that sort of thing. I've, I've come to realize that or come to think, believe that there's, there's these different paths. And I think somehow our, our brain makes these connections and shoots off these, these possibilities that you follow, if you follow this path, this might happen or this might happen. And there may be multiple, you know, usually there is multiple possibilities uh, from where, from any standpoint we're at because of whatever decisions we might make in the future. But I think sometimes things line up and then it gives a clear projection as to where, where we're going. And I guess following that line of, of energy or what have you, um, our mind may, may be able to connect into into like what might happen in the future maybe i i don't know i can't explain it but it's to me that's very close to what i understand to be um kind of i guess you could say scientifically how dreams work like as far as i know is a definition and i don't fully understand this but as i sort of understand it or as m my understanding it, of it is is kind of like your subconscious works out as if there were a puzzle and everything was a puzzle. It's like your subconscious works out everything that could possibly be, throws in everything and also just stuff from that doesn't seem to belong as far as, because I, I, I have, you know, I'll be dreaming about stuff that doesn't even make sense or, a lot of times I'm in a third world country. I'll be in Africa. I'll be in South America. I'll be dragged across the desert. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, you know, but, but I think, you know, I think your mind does a subconscious. It goes through the subconscious goes through all variabilities and all the complex, you know, all the complications or possibilities and sort of puts them together and then allows your brain to process what's happening to it as far as our daily experience. That's as close as I know to like an actual description of dreaming or its, its purpose as far as my experience. So what I, I, you bring up a good word, Jason, I'd like to know what everybody, um, what do you think deja vu is? Well, for me, uh, it is uh, experiencing in reality the 
the feelings, the thoughts, and like memories of a place or a situation that um, as if I'm I'm remembering usually it's I'm remembering a memory that came up in a dream about what about where I am at the time. So you it, feel like you the you feel like the um the reason you feel that the situation is familiar is because you've previously dreamt about it. Yeah. And Chris, what I hear you, what I heard you saying is that you feel like the subconscious works out all these different scenarios. And so pretty much the same thing Jason's saying, you're, you know, you've kind of been there um, in your mind mm -hmm. before being there in your person. I have, a, I have deja vu moments and I mean, some of them are so crystal clear that, I mean, I, there's times that I've just questioned am I just dead and I'm just reviewing my lifetime and that's why I, that's why I, you know, think I'm manifesting shit, but I'm really just remembering it, it that it's about to happen because it, I mean, it's really strange. Um, you walk into a place that you've never been in and yet you could probably draw a map out of the building of every room. You know what I mean? Because you just have that much knowledge of being there before, even though you haven't. So it's really, it's quite curious to me. What about you, Karen? What do you think about deja vu moments? I tend to think deja vu moments tend to be more actual experiences from the past. But when I talk about the past, it may not be just this life. And I'm not talking about, I don't, I don't really know where I stand on, um, <laughs> what's that r word uh reincarnation i don't know what <laughs> what was that chris were you saying oh she's crazy let's <laughs> um i i definitely believe in a pre-existence i, th I think uh, i was saying the cycle of reincarnation <laughs> oh thank you okay <laughs> um yeah. I, I definitely believe in a pre-existence, pre and I believe that we have been evolving over a very lengthy period of time. And I think that our experiences with um, with a lot of the same people, um, and I and I think basically this is, you know, this is for me my planet my home it um was a place where lots of things uh had their origin and um you know that that i i, I think sometimes i think sometimes about my uh, guidance team i i looked up one day i happened to have i didn't realize this but i happened to have one of those uh popcorn ceilings you know, from the 70s or whatever, anything that was built in the 70s, they sprayed, you know, little beads of crap up on the ceiling. <laughs> and yeah, then they painted over all this gravelly stuff. Um, anyway, I was thinking, you know, that's my, that's my guidance team. I was thinking how many people, and I, and I think often about a description that I heard that all of us who have called this planet home, um, you know, this is where we stay. In other words, you don't you don't go off to some other planet. I mean, you can visit, but you but you don't go off and do other things so much. At least in my mind, that's that's kind of where things are. And so, if you think about everybody, you know, just think about seven billion people. On the head of a pin <laughs> it's kind of like they're probably jostling elbows a lot <laughs> and you probably have more than one visitor at the same time Is this I, Whoville? <laughs> uh, you know I've never really thought about going to Hollywood and being a scriptwriter but 
<laughs> Maybe I could. Um, so I, when I think about deja vu and I think about it hying back to a past experience, I also think, and this this is something I've never really heard anybody else talk about, so I don't know that anybody else thinks this, but I think because I've always been so curious about people and about time and about things going on and stuff like that, that before I came to this earth in a physical body, I visited a lot uh, from a realm, maybe the same realm that my grand, my uh, father-in-law's in. Um, I, I visited to see what other people were doing. And so, you know, Adam and Eve, oh, that was a, hmm, hmm, how do you feel about that? <laughs> was that a mistake? Are you sorry you ate the apple? You know, I just think about some of the different scenes that went on, and I was probably viewing them. I probably managed, especially if I had any idea that it was going to be a big deal, I managed to get in on seeing what was going to happen, even though I wasn't a part of it. So for me, deja vu can really be pretty huge. An interesting aspect of, of the lucid dreaming and, um, is that you feel like you feel like it's so real. Um, some people were talking about, you know, whether or not they could actually learn things, learn new things like, Someone was talking about teaching themselves how to play guitar in their dreams, you know, and I don't know, that's sort of, that, that's when I first heard about lucid dreaming, that's what kind of interested me. And not that I, you know, thought I could actually teach myself guitar, but uh, just the, just the idea that in your, um, in your dream state, you can be productive in a different way that you can't be on uh, the reality plane. Absolutely. That's a good question. I wonder if I play audios of piano lessons that I could learn it while I'm asleep. I know, I was just thinking, oh man, I gotta learn how to play my cello while I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be awesome. I think, you, I think if you knew enough, you could probably practice. Uh -huh. But uh, I, I don't think the, uh, the basics, you would probably need, you know, I think it would be a totally different thing if you could, um, you know, actually speak to a, a, a musician who's passed away and have them teach you their style or something. That would you know, be that. so cool. I'm going <laughs> to try it. I'm going to try it. Yeah. So what do you think, do you guys, have you guys had um, recurring dreams like I used to have? these recurring dreams hi sandy and um we've, we've gone completely off topic today we started <laughs> on the verse and we started well part of the verse led us into a talk about meditation and then it's just kind of morphed from there and we're currently talking about recurring dreams so i used to have <laughs> these recurring dreams where i would be um i don't think they were dreams i think they were you know me just astral projecting because i would go to these uh and i've heard other people describe them too it's almost like some kind of big greek building or something i don't know there's like these huge pillars and and there were lots of other people there except nobody had bodies we were all just in spirit form and um, we were always learning lessons um about the earth like uh, almost as if we were preparing to go to earth you know so what was i lucid dreaming was i astral projecting is it again a, a larger form of deja vu and i'm remembering um you know it, who knows it's i i don't know i don't understand it all but um have you guys had recurring dreams like that where you you know that it's not just a dream because it happens over and over and different lessons and I had good day, everybody. I'm sorry, I'm like here in the last two minutes. Uh, busy morning, but um, I used to have recurring dreams, but I don't even remember what they were. I, I have it lately. I don't really remember my dreams, but I know that I have them and that they're 
they're almost like in between worlds. It's not sleep or awake and it's like almost real. And, but um, yeah, recurring, I have to think about. I did used to have a lot of recurring dreams, but. Yeah, it seems to me that like when you're talking about deja vu and, and that being connected to our dreams that when I experience the, the deja vu, all I know is that it's okay, this is a, and it, it's not that it's an important moment, but this is a significant, something significant is going to happen is, is kind of the feel. I never know exactly what it is, but I just feel like, oh, there's something significant or this is a, this is an important, is somehow important in my life, like, like I've dreamt about, I had a dream about walking into a building made of glass. The walls were glass, and and um, and then uh, it was probably for two months, uh, three months later. I went for this job interview, and it was this. It was a, it was like a concrete building on the outside, but when you went in the inside, all the walls were glass. It was really weird, and I and I had, and it was. And I went to a job interview and I, everything worked out and I was there for like four years and it was some really you know, great friends and, you know, uh, just kind of that stuff, that sort of thing. And I've also had, it seems, you know, I've, I've actually had three, now that I think about it, three times that I've had a lucid dream about, about a, a new job. Um, and, you know, one was a dream where I, where it was, a place at the end of this long road and and then when I went to then someone gave me offered offered me a job and when I went to it it was like right off the interstate and it was like right there and so I got on this got on the interstate and I drove on this interstate for you know a good 10 miles and then when I right out right when I got off the interstate the, the job was right there and I didn't make the like the connection oh this is a long road and this it just was a feeling it was a weird feeling like I had been there before and it and it immediately made a connection to a dream I had completely forgotten about. And that's how that's what kind of what J, deja vu is for me. I totally didn't realize it was the top of the hour. That was like the fastest hour ever. <laughs> are, are you sure we're all here? Are we not or maybe we are dreaming right now? Maybe. Yeah, we might be. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should give our final thoughts and um, we haven't really talked a whole lot specifically to the verse today but it's been a very interesting conversation I really enjoyed it and um, I Catherine just, would you read the verse just once more sure yep okay. all under heaven have a common beginning this beginning is the mother of the world Having known the mother, we may proceed to know her children. Having known the children, we should go back and hold on to the mother. Keep your mouth shut. Guard the senses, and life is ever full. Open your mouth. Always be busy, and life is beyond hope. Being the small is called clarity. Being flexible is called strength. Using the shining radiance, you return again to the light and save yourself misfortune. This is called the practice of eternal light. Wow. So we didn't talk about that verse at all today. <laughs> we did, because we talked about, we started out talking about meditation. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> and what that says to me is that, <clears throat> that we, can, we can reconnect if we choose to with the mother the source and kind of reset ourselves if we choose to and you know so if things kind of get too out of control that is there as an outlet that we might be able to maybe use some of the techniques of, of uh, you know clearing our mind before we go to bed and then thinking about connecting with our source and then, uh, or even during meditation, like you guys were, were uh, mentioning, and then that somehow can help us to refresh ourselves. I don't know, but it's uh, something I'll think about, and, and maybe I'll try to reconnect. Um, I'll let you know. Thanks. Yeah, and sometimes I've had, I've had uh, dreams, you know, that 
that are really uncomfortable. And so that verse was like the shining spot that reminded me of waking up. And sometimes I've wanted to wake up. And so that's, that's, that's good to know too, you know, that sometimes you're able to wake up and come out of a dream. I think we demonstrated the verse, or at least the last part of it, where it talks about being, take your shining radiance and return to the light. I think that's something really that we do here every week. Uh, by virtue of being together, by, by virtue of having like minds, and then by virtue of being stimulated by um, the interpretation of the verse that... Uh, Wayne Dyer has selected, and I've just really enjoyed this because, um, well, I always I always enjoy being with the, all of you and and uh, the things that we talk about. Love you lots. Sandy, do you have any beginning and final thoughts? <laughs> Well, hello, I'm Sandy Root in Miami Beach, and this is Skye, if you saw her. <laughs> um, yeah, Jason, when you mentioned the Divine Mother, that's what I first thought of in the verse, too, because it's interesting, the verse is always in tune, <laughs> because in um, Kundalini Yoga this morning, we did a, a, a asana set for the Divine Mother, and it was all about nurturing her nurturing us, but also us nurturing her. Um, and if we're praying to her and giving her, you know, sustenance, sustenance and life and, and gratitude, like it could be Mother Earth or however we see the divine, the, the divine mother, it could be your own, the females in your life and that vessel that they are of creation. Um, and if you're grateful for everything in your life while you're holding that space of the divine mother, that you will receive everything that you need. Yay! <laughs> That's my closing thoughts. Thank you. I'm glad I got to hop on for a little bit. Good to see you. <laughs> well, we're glad you did, too. Yeah, so to take us back around to where we started, you know, everybody has their own way of connecting back to the mother or whether they do it through meditation or, you know, also another way of meditation, I think, is doing art. Like you've seen pictures of the monks doing the sand art. I mean, that is definitely a form of meditation and prayer. That's very intentional work that they're doing there. And I think there's so many ways that we can connect. Um, we just each have to find our own way. And But I think the flexibility is really important and because none of us have all the answers. I mean, I've got, I've got some answers, but I don't really have, I, I, I don't understand half of, you know, more than half of what's happened in my life. So <laughs> it's kind of like, we're just going to have to wait until the end of the, of the movie to find out exactly what the heck is going on here, you know? <laughs> so uh, thank you. It's been a little bit of a strange discussion this morning, but it's been amazing. That's what I love about this mastermind is that we can take it. We're flexible and we can take it wherever we want. We'll be back here next Sunday or Saturday, and hopefully Samantha will be feeling better and be with us. And uh, you can always find us at SaturdayMorningMastermind.com. I think it's, um, is it Zoom.SaturdayMorningMastermind.com is the instructions on how to get on here if you invite somebody on or whatnot and they need help. Zoom is just this, it's a little short download. Um, so it's, it's not anything big. And so we'll be studying verse 53 of Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Dr. Wayne Dwyer. And we'll talk about that next week. And who knows what we'll talk about. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> Everybody have an awesome week and uh, keep love in your heart. Thanks. You too. Have a great Bye. day, everybody. Bye. See you. All right. Take care.